travel ban. Willie. Yeah, let's go to the Supreme Court, which has given President Trump a major political victory, ruling to uphold the travel ban. The justices ruled five to four yesterday to allow the ban <laughs> after a series of federal court rulings previously had invalidated or scaled back earlier versions of it. The latest version maintains limits on granting visas to travelers from five of the seven countries covered by the original executive order imposed last September by presidential proclamation. Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen still are covered by the ban, which also prohibits travel by North Koreans and certain government officials in Venezuela. Writing for the majority, Chief Justice John Roberts said the court viewed the ability to regulate immigration as squarely within a president's powers. But Justice Sonia Sotomayor, who wrote a dissent, said that the ruling ignores the, quote, pain and suffering the ban inflicts upon countless families and individuals, many of whom are United States citizens. The decision marks an end to 15 months of legal battles over a key part of the president's immigration policy. Roughly a year ago, the president had tweeted, quote, the Justice Department should have stayed with the original travel ban, not the watered down, politically correct version they submitted to Supreme Court. But yesterday, the president celebrated the justice's decision. A tremendous success, a tremendous victory for the American people and for our Constitution. This is a great victory for our Constitution. We have to be tough and we have to be safe and we have to be secure. At a minimum, we have to make sure that we vet people coming into the country. We know who's coming in. We know where they're coming from. We just have to know who's coming here. The ruling shows that all of the attacks from the media and the Democrat politicians are wrong, and they turned out to be very wrong. So, Professor Jonathan Turley, let's talk about what the Supreme Court did and did not rule yesterday. It was not, it seems to me, a commentary by the majority on the policy itself, but rather on the president's ability to make that policy. That's right. And even though the travel orders uh, did change, the two threshold questions did not. Even the challengers admitted that the two really key questions remained the same throughout that period. The first is whether federal law barred uh, any type of entry limit based on national status or origin. Uh, the challengers said that federal law doesn't allow that. The Supreme Court set aside that argument and said that it does allow uh, for that type of discrimination according to national origin. The second one, which has gotten more attention, is whether you can rely on the president's political statements from the campaign and later his tweets. And we talked about that before. You know, when this whole litigation began, uh, I said that I thought the Supreme Court would reverse these lower courts on both these questions uh, because there are longstanding cases that really did seem to contradict the lower courts, particularly in the reliance on these uh, types of of political statements. What the court said is you just can't ignore the record created by the agencies. They say that they have this independent basis for doing this. So the opinion doesn't really move the ball necessarily in terms of increasing the president's authority. It reaffirms a long uh, set of cases. There is one thing that has been missed in a lot of the coverage, which I think is wonderful news for everyone. And that is the majority opinion written by John Roberts finally put a stake through the heart of one of the most uh, truly reviled and abusive decisions in history, and that is Karamatsu, which was handed down in 1942. It hasn't attracted much notice, but in almost an aside, Chief Justice Roberts said, Karamatsu hasn't been technically overturned in the past, but it is dead. And he also said it was unconstitutional when it was written. Um, that is the decision that led to 120,000 Japanese Americans being uh, sent to internment camps. And it is long overdue, but boy, that was worth, uh, it was certainly worth the wait to see it overturned. It should have been done much, be long, much earlier than this. And Jonathan, really quickly again, this was, we've talked about this before. This really was not a surprise at all, was it? Because the president is, all, any president is granted such authority. If the president's first travel ban had tried to, if they tried to push that through, that probably would have been overturned. Certainly what he said on the campaign, a ban against all Muslims would have been overturned. This was narrowed to countries, most of the countries that Barack Obama's administration said are the most dangerous countries to, to, to actually allow uh, travel bans, uh, travel visas in from. So this, this was narrowed considerably 
even using some of the countries that Barack Obama's administration focused on? Yeah, I think this was a very predictable result, Joe. Uh, it is consistent with past cases, and it's a shot across the bow for courts below that they're going to have to separate or insulate themselves from some of this president's incendiary language and focus on the traditional record in deciding these cases. Jonathan. Yeah, Admiral, let me uh, go to you. Uh, and let's look at Libya, look at Syria, look at Iran, look at North Korea, look at, look at again, the, the, the countries that made up uh, the, the travel ban, uh, this very narrow, you know, Libya, Syria, Iran, Yemen, Somalia, North Korea, Venezuela. If you're, if you're selecting seven countries uh, to, to actually uh, tighten the grip on who can get travel visas to come to the United States, that's a pretty damn good start, isn't it? Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, this is a, a rogues gallery. But this is a good example of two things. One is, as we always say, elections have consequences, but uh, constitutions have consequences as well. So let's start by stipulating this is the legal normative system at work. That doesn't mean it's a wise decision. It doesn't mean that it makes sense geopolitically. I just returned from Asia, and I'm watching the returns in Asia, if you will, and I'm seeing big Muslim countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, countries we want on our side see this. I'm watching our allies in the region, Sunni Arab states like Saudi Arabia, Jordan, UAE, Egypt, looking at this. And I'm looking at Americans looking at this. So I'd say it's a legal decision, but boy, is it bad geopolitics. Well, um, what's then, the impact of it? it yeah, Admiral, what's the, what do you think the impact of it's going to be? It's going to make it so much harder, Joe, when we reach out to Muslim countries to participate with us in the battle against the Islamic State, for example, when we reach out to them in every dimension to stand with us defending Israel, for example. Mm -hmm. This is a difficult, difficult move on the part of the administration. Has, has ISIS <clears throat> or Al-Qaeda been handed a bigger recruiting Huge. gift than this decision? Never. And it will be played in the states. It will be played in the region. And above all, it will be played on Facebook, Twitter, where the command and control system of the Islamic State resides. They will use it to recruit, proselytize, and operationalize. So uh, jumping off what the Admiral just said, Yamish, how does this filter through Washington and politics for Democrats and Republicans given uh, the positions and the elections coming up? Does this, does this have an impact there? It certainly has an impact there. This Supreme Court decision was as much a victory for Mitch McConnell and Republicans who want to bend the rules of the Senate as it was for President Trump. Mitch McConnell played the long game. He said, I'm going to wait and see if we can get a Republican in the in the White House. Um, even as President Trump was running and, and Republicans were very, very nervous about whether or not he was going to be able to get that seat, Mitch McConnell st stood his ground and they got Neil Gorsuch. And Mitch McConnell tweeted out a picture yesterday of him shaking hands with Neil Gorsuch, and it was because Mitch McConnell feels like if there's anything that Republicans did, we ensured that the Supreme Court is going to have our back here. And the Supreme Court did something interesting. The other panelists can talk about whether or not how legal this is. But from a political point of view, the dissent said, hey, we're really worried about this because of what President said on the campaign trail, because of the fact that he's been talking about Muslims in this derogatory way. And the Supreme Court said, hey, the president has his powers, and that's it. And I think that there's a lot of talk about President Trump's rhetoric, and what we're mm -hmm. seeing is that the court that the Republicans essentially pushed for aren't going to bring his tweets and his conversations into the the Supreme Court when they're making these decisions. I think when we're looking at the midterms and down the line, this for President Trump, this was a huge victory. It's a promise that he made on the campaign trail. A lot of his supporters that I talk to feel very much like he's keeping his promises when he's doing this. So in mm -hmm. some ways, it really helps President Trump do that. For Democrats, I think it gives them something to talk about to say, hey, this is the things that the Republicans have done when you give them power. Well, and how interesting it is that Donald Trump yesterday praises the court like any autocratic leader that he actually seems to want to be. He praises the courts when they rule for him, say they're illegitimate when he rules against them. But fortunately, uh, the courts are still doing what they think uh, the Constitution guides them to do. Jonathan Turley, 
Uh, there have been times over the past four or five years where we've come to the end of the session and we've gotten a, a list of Supreme Court decisions that have come out. We've looked through them and we've been surprised uh, when John Roberts upheld Obamacare. Been surprised with other decisions where this court didn't act like you would expect a traditionally conservative court to act. We certainly were surprised a month or so ago when Neil Gorsuch was the deciding vote in a five to four decision with the more progressive members of the Supreme Court. But by by and far, this session has seemed to be more conservative uh, uh, than than recent years, has it not? It has. This has been a good term for conservatives. We're expecting the Janus case to come down uh, in favor of the conservative viewpoint, which is a case dealing with union dues and whether a public employee has to pay a fine, even though he's outside uh, not find a fee for the work of the of a of a union. Um, it's expected that that long-standing debate will be resolved, uh, uh, probably by Justice Alito writing for the majority uh, against the unions. That can present a very significant hit for the unions financially. But as you know, there have been a series of decisions that just broke in favor of the right. I don't think anything has happened. This is the, just the, the order of the cases and how they came up. Uh, after all, Kennedy is not reluctant to vote against the conservatives when he feels it's needed. Even John Roberts is broken from the conservative wing on uh, things like um, the individual mandate of Obamacare. Um, and we saw in Carpenter, as you mentioned, Gorsuch going with the left on privacy. But this has been a good term for conservatives. There's no question about it. Really has. Really, though, uh, one, one real missed opportunity as far as I'm concerned. But uh, it, when, it, when it comes to gerrymandering, the court mm -hmm. just, for the most part, not only sort of took a pass on it, uh, they made it much harder. Uh, for anybody challenging gerrymandered districts that really do uh, seem to twist democracy in knots. Yeah, that, that got buried a little bit under, under this uh, travel ban hearing, but that's an important one as well we'll talk about. I also just wanted to point out, I think, Joe, that this decision yesterday, for a lot of people who voted for Donald Trump and had to hold their noses and it was about a Supreme Court justice for them, you know, there's that meme going around, but Gorsuch, with all the chaos around President Trump, yeah, but we got Gorsuch, we got Gorsuch. Yesterday is a validation for them, that the vote that they put in, that Mitch McConnell helped to hold up Merrick Garland, that they got Gorsuch and they got a Supreme Court decision and they expect others that will benefit them. For that, uh, I think they can justify their vote for Donald Trump and continue to support him. Well, Unfortunately, Mika, the ends justifies the means, I yeah. guess, if you're Mitch McConnell. And not only that, but he rubs, uh, he rubs half of America's noses in mud uh, by trolling them after a Supreme Court decision, which Admiral Stravitas uh, says is going to have uh, terrible consequences globally for the United States of America. Uh, but Mitch McConnell is who Mitch McConnell is, and right now he is blindly, uh, he, he's a blindly a Trumpist, and uh, good luck with that. If that's how he wants to be remembered, and that is how he will be remembered, that as well as destroying uh, the way uh, the United States Senate selects Supreme Court justices, uh, that's his legacy. I hope he enjoys it. Well, they all have uh, found a brand uh, that they will live with forever. Jonathan Turley, thank you very much. Still ahead on Morning Joe, Senate Democrats trying to get answers about the border crisis. HHS Secretary Alex Azar says hundreds of children and families have been reunited, but the numbers don't seem to add up. We still have a lot of questions hanging out there about the fate of these children. Plus, how worried are NATO allies about a potential summit between President Trump and Vladimir Putin? Admiral James Tavridis will weigh in on that. You're watching Morning Joe. We'll be right back. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.